There's a range of benefits and risks associated with investing in commercial real estate that you need to be cognizant of before you're making commitments to a property. Now that you've become familiar with these unique elements of the commercial real estate investment process, it's time to explore the best practices when it comes to real estate investing. It's easy for new investors in the commercial real estate field to take on too much too quickly and feel out of their depth. So what should you, what should you do? Uh, with all of this in mind, if you're prepared to invest in a commercial property, there are a few key things you will want to do before committing to an investment. In-depth due diligence. <clears throat> this will be the most time-consuming, but also potentially the most rewarding, as it will provide you with a valuable insight and knowledge about the property. You will want to be exhaustive in your process to catch everything. This re means reviewing the financial performance of the property in the present and in the past to get an idea of the returns you can expect. You will also want to conduct market research for the area the property is located in to get a better idea of potential customer levels and possible foot traffic. Examining the physical condition of the property is also going to be a must to determine what issues should be addressed before taking over a property or what potential work and repairs may be necessary in the future. Ideally, you should have professional examinations conducted during this process. So if you can have documentation of the condition of the property and objective recommendations, you can make a better informed decision. Now, we need to pay attention to the value metrics. There are a number of value metrics that you will need to pay attention to if you're going to make a serious investment in anything commercial real estate. <clears throat> These will include details such as the sales price of the property in question, as well as comparable sales in the local area. Similar buildings and properties in close proximity should provide an accurate indication of the fair market value of a property. You should also consider the gross rent month multiplier to begin with, as this will give you a rough guideline of what the payoff period for the property will be without factoring in other expenses such as repairs, vacancies, insurance costs, and property taxes. <clears throat> at the same time, you will also want to keep in mind what kind of cap rate you are looking at with each potential investment. These percentage values can be a useful metric for many investors to identify the level of risk that they're comfortable assuming and pass on properties uh, that exceed their tolerance threshold. We got to choose the right industry. So with office, industrial, retail, and multifamily properties to choose from, you need to pick the industry that is going to be the best fit for you. Each type of property has its own unique risks and benefits that you'll want to be fully aware of. <clears throat> what makes retail properties exciting to one investor might mean a host of headaches to another investor. So you should be absolutely sure you're ready for any and all responsibilities that will come your way. You'll want to evaluate the pros and cons of each asset class and select the best fit for your needs as an investor and capabilities as a landlord. What you should not do, now that we've covered the vital steps that you should take when investing in a commercial property, we should also cover some of the major pitfalls that you'll want to avoid. These are some of the biggest mistakes that new investors will make when trying to get started in the field. You can't go it alone. One of the biggest mistakes many new investors make with commercial real estate properties is trying to do everything on their own. These types of properties require careful, careful excuse me, consideration and evaluation to make a solid investment decision. And in the end, that's going to translate into searching for a lot of information uh, and hopefully positive returns for you as the investor. Successful investors in commercial real estate may rely upon teams of real estate professionals to do quite a few things, such as setting the overall strategy, performing the necessary market research, sourcing viable properties, uh, and even carrying out property management after the property has been acquired. <clears throat> now, one thing you really should do is focus only on the potential ROI or should not do, excuse me. <laughs> Too often new investors get caught up in the potential return that the property could yield them and lose sight of the full scope of the responsibility that a property will carry. And also as well, that they might have a, uh, an unrealistic reality of what the income flow will look like from a certain property. 
Focusing only on the possible return doesn't take into account the time value of money or even the timing of periodic cash flows that could occur. Additionally, the longer an investor has to wait for any possible returns, the more difficult it becomes to forecast accurately what those returns would realistically look like. Because we all don't have a crystal ball. Instead, you should focus on elements that will give you a more actionable and realistic income expectation, such as the recurring cash flow, any potential appreciation of the property value over the long term, as well as your internal rate of return, rate of return excuse me, for your project. Uh, we don't want you to underestimate costs. <clears throat> Often going hand in hand with focusing too much on potential returns, many investors also underestimate the potential overall costs that could be uh, that could come with a certain investment. These costs could range from paying property taxes and insurance costs to paying for repairs and renovations as needed. Repairs and renovations, especially, can quickly add up to a considerable cost if not accounted to from the very beginning, and in turn affects your overall bottom line. To avoid this, issues for repairs should be ideally be identified during the due diligence period and planned for as best as possible. So that way you're not blindsided by them later, as well as by that cost. However, there still will be other costs that come up at a moment's notice that you will need to be able to address. So budgeting and repair costs will be necessary. Minor repairs can be expected fairly regularly during ownership. But you can also expect to handle water leaks, electrical issues, infrastructure issues, or other unforeseen issues at least once during the ownership of the property, depending on the age of the condition of the building as well. Uh, most important one here is we don't want you to overextend yourself financially. The final pitfall that should be avoided is that of overinvesting. True of any kind of investing, you should not overinvest or place yourself in an unsafe position by committing more money than you afford to lose. In all of your money, if all of your money is tied up in a single property and an emergency strikes on that property or in another aspect of your life, it could lead to potentially disastrous consequences for you. And we obviously don't want that, so that's why we're doing this video. Savvy investors know how much risk they can afford and look for a balance between risk and fiscal responsibility. This balance will look different for every investor, but the basic rule of never investing money that you can't afford to lose is a great starting point. It is also important to remember that investing in real estate, especially commercial real estate, is a long-term investment strategy and should be treated as such. It will typically bring lower but more consistent returns, and individuals looking to make a lot of money fast may feel burned by the need uh, for their patience uh, in such a project that will take a amount of time over. It just takes time to make money, slow and consistently, and that's, that's the goal. Um, now, if you're ever in need of a commercial real estate broker, I can be reached at 281-222-0433, or you can visit, visit calendly.com slash Viking Enterprise to schedule an appointment. Thanks for your time, and hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.